core button. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, I, I was on, I was on some some medicine the last time, so <laughs> work. <laughs> medicine. <laughs> What's good, bro? I'm good, man. Kind of was a little absent-minded, but we good. Hold on one second. I just had to eat some breakfast. I could have did it on camera, but that's that's bad etiquette. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's bad. You smacking, chewing, and all that. Some people have a real problem with that. It's trying to be more of a pro. Let me get the light human, human lighting. Uh, this camera focus. All right, man. We're going. We're going to do uh, what we did the other day. Uh, right. Welcome to the moment. See, see if you can turn your sound up. It's coming in kind of low. Uh, Maybe I need my headphones. I don't know. Uh, the headphones will work. Trust me. One, huh? The headphones will probably work better for you because I'm. It sounds good in my on my end. <clears throat> Excuse All me. Right. Through my headphones, it sounds perfect. All right. This might want to plug in the matrix. Ah uh, man. You can hear me? Yeah, hey, hey. All right, all right. All right, so welcome back to the uh, Momentary Podcast slash uh, Wellness Initiative with uh, Mr. Wellness Initiative himself, Devin McCrory, a.k.a. Every Cypher, a.k.a. Phil Guy Guy, a.k.a. <laughs> Big D. <laughs> Whatever moniker he's had for the past 30 <laughs> years. And... um. Uh, we're talking about sense. This is our third, actually 3.5 installment um, because we uh, did yeah. a show uh, this past Friday just talking about the, the Oscars and Slapgate and if Will Smith is simp and blah, blah, blah. And we had a great discussion the other day, but the only problem is I forgot to push record. Matter of fact, let me make sure. I, did I push record again? Yeah, he did. He okay. Did. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we had a good discussion, but I was only able to, to record the last 10 minutes. But uh, I feel like so many people have been talking about this. We could we can we could easily redo it, you know what I'm saying? So that's no problem. And then um as the conversation ended was ending, we were starting to get into some really, really deep psychoanalysis of the whole situation. Who was Will actually defending? Was Chris Rock defending Will Smith? You know what I'm saying? We kind of we kind of delved into that. But at that point, um, we both just had stuff to do. You know what I'm saying? But today, mm -hmm. yeah. we got a little more more time. We're going to recap the, the the event, uh, both give our individual thoughts on it, and just, um, just go into the psychoanalysis and how can we use this um, as a teaching moment for the young ones. We're always trying to teach the young ones. Yeah. So how can you use a teach moment for the young ones and just people in the general whenever you're faced with adverse situations? Like, what's the best way to respond? You know what I'm saying? Like, besides violence, because myself and Devin, we're not advocates of violence. I mean, unless it's absolutely necessary. Yeah, necessary, yeah. You know what I mean? But not every situation is, you know, you have to solve it with your hands and with your feet. You know what I mean? But it's like nowadays... Run the fade is just a popular. <laughs> it's a popular yeah. phrase. At least they ain't saying shoot each other. Like one, yeah. one thing I say about the youth nowadays. I mean, they still be killing each other. But the popular thing is run the fade. Like people <laughs> always want to fight with their hand, and that's cool. I mean, somebody still wind up dying. Somebody still get up getting shot. It start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it start with those intentions. But anyway, yeah, let's let's start with um. How do you, how did you find out? Say it again, because it was it was breaking up a little bit. Repeat what you said about about slap geek. Oh man, well see, uh, I'm a stand up comedian myself. Uh, how, did, how did you first find out about slap? Geek? Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and you know what's funny? It's slap gate is like it's people try to downplay it, but it's such a big event, a big thing in the human history, American human history. That you would know exactly what you was doing and where you was at when you heard about it. <laughs> yeah. Now, when I heard about it, it was last Sunday, and uh, we was on a podcast, my uh, the, the light skin perspective with uh, Keenan Jerome Floyd, 
And um, he's the one that brought it to my attention. Because I don't, I've never really been to the Oscars. I don't, I don't care about that stuff. But he's in, he's like in Hollywood. He, like he's working on a, a pilot for the comedian Godfrey. You know, he does like business with Tiffany Haddish. You know, just all kinds of people. Chris Spencer from, that was, you know who Chris Spencer is? Yeah. He was the um the fake Muslim and Don't Be a Menace. He said, oh. <laughs> he said could you do me a favor? Could you tap that? white woman for me that was funny <laughs> as hell but that actually chris spencer runs uh chocolate sundays which is a, a, a comedy showcase for blacks uh at the comedy store i think yeah every sunday yeah you know what i'm saying okay. and i actually just submitted a tape to get it like a, a online audition hopefully that, that goes through and if it pops off they'll i mean it's cast so far out like people that's getting on now getting getting passed or approved their dates ain't until like next year, damn near the end of next year. That's how back right. that is. But anyway, um, me and Kenny, we were doing a pod and then he was telling me, oh, yo, uh, people be trying to slap comedians and fighting comedians. And I was like, that's what you talking about. He was mm-hmm. like, Will Smith just like smack like Chris Rock. I mean, Chris, yeah, we're Will Smith crack, smack Chris Rock. And I was like, yo, I have no idea what you're talking about. He's like, yo, here's a tape. So he shows me the tape. We see what happens. Uh, Chris Rock makes a joke about Jada. He said, Jada Pinkett, I love it. Can't wait to see you, G.I. Jane, too. <laughs> and then she was like, <sighs> and then the first, even before that point, when he, when Chris Rock makes a joke, Will Smith like, <gasps> like he laughing at <laughs> And then they pan. He's dying laughing. Yeah, he's dying laughing. Then they, they pan to Jada. And she's like, is my face moving? I, I, I'm frozen my screen. Yeah, your screen froze. Your audio's still going. Yeah, yeah, this shit freezing up. Let me see. Let me see if I go and try to turn off the camera and turn it back on. It's not giving me, damn, it's not giving me no option. Because I, I don't, you know what I'm saying? If we can catch this while it's happening, I, I want the quality of the playback to be as good as possible. But I remember where I'm at. In the conversation, it's just it's literally just it's saying like not responding. Yeah, it's crazy, and, and this computer is not corrupted by porn, so I understand. <laughs> it yo, damn, it totally froze. Uh, holy crap! Let me see. Okay, okay. Let me see. I didn't even do that. Damn, man, they gave me the option to turn the camera on. God dang. Uh, okay, back. Good? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if it do, because I, I don't want to... As long as I can see this malfunctioning as it's happening... You know what I'm saying? And we and we can get at that. I'm, I want to I wanna get at that, man. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let's try to change, switch this view up real quick. Speaker, immerse, exit. Oh, exit full screen. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, we good. So, so as as I was saying, you see her pan to the right and like roll her eyes. Then all of a sudden, like I wish they could. I wish the camera would have stayed on Will Smith face. Yeah. From the, like the, the Manchurian candidate moment. Where he just happy and he turns to kill. That footage out there. That damn footage out there. I it gotta that be out there. Ca- How many cameras in there? You feel me? Yo, it's gonna leak. You gonna see it within the next week or two. Cause the w- one of the latest uh, pieces of footage that was released is when he smacks Will. They sh- they show uh, Jada from behind. They show her head, mm-hmm. and they show her like laughing. So it's like, so. Uh, Getting talked about, you know what I'm saying, as far as getting compared to G.I. Jean, who was a strong, beautiful woman that had short hair that was able to compete with men. That's offensive to you. But seeing your husband put everything at risk and punch somebody in the face, that's funny. On that platform, in public, in front of billions of people from TV and the audience. You know what I'm saying? So that that's I was doing a podcast when I found out about that because Keenan put me on 
when I first saw the tape, because you don't see the part where Will Smith is like, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. They did, that part, the American version, th those uh, the, uh, the audio was off. Mm -hmm. But you know, different countries film Oscars. So the motherfuckers in Australia and Japan and China and shit. No, they had the real, and they was releasing it on Twitter and everything. You know what I'm saying? So at yeah. first I thought it was fake, but then when I heard that part, and I saw, saw his eyes, it was like, yes, yes. Yeah. I'm like, no, nah, this, this, this might might be real. And then when they started breaking it down, as far as like Chris Rock's reaction, how he kind of stumbled, how he, he clenched his fist, like he almost like, what the? But he. He caught himself like a comedian. As comedians, uh, we're always assessing things like a million miles per minute. Per minute. Mm -hmm. That's why they were so good at uh, thinking on the spot, improv, blah 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 blah. So he probably y'all might have put. Oh man, biggest star in the world. Oscars. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying. And he got an upcoming tour too, so he ain't trying to mess got that a tour. up. Tour. You know, he got his his bag to worry about. Um, it would just be worse if they started rolling around in them dress shoes. And them tuxedos in front of all them black people at an Oscars that was the first uh, Oscars produced by an all black team since '96 when Quincy Jones did it. You know, because it was this, there was this running thing. You know, the internet. Now it's crazy. Nowadays we got so much access to information and to to, to like narrow down on what the truth is, but people mm -hmm. still don't use it. Because the first thing they said was, oh, this is the first black Oscars ever. And it wasn't. It was one hosted by Whoopi or one produced by Whoopi, Quincy Jones, three or four other people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But still, it still looks bad because that was our night. Mm -hmm. That was our night. That was Will Smith's first Academy Award, the, the biggest award that he's ever gotten. He's gotten mm -hmm. Grammys. I, I don't know if he got an Emmy. I don't know if he got an Emmy for his uh, or a Tony. Or whatever, but I know he got a Grammy, platinum. I think diamond selling artist. You know what I mean? And and, and there are many black leads historically who've won that Oscar. Right. So right. Low out the dumb out over something so small. He could have got on stage, accepted his award, threw some roast back. You know what I mean? But you know, I don't want to. I want. Yeah, I want. I want you to talk about like what what. Where were you when you heard, and what was your thoughts? You know, did you think it was yeah. fake at first, or break down your break uh, it down? Yeah, um, same same as you. You know, you know, we're not into all that Hollywood shit anyway. Nah. So I wasn't paying it no mind. I woke up the next day, and you know how you wake up in the morning, and um, you know, you, you take your morning shit, and you look at the phone. So I'm looking at the phone, everybody posting about it. I'm like, what the fuck is this? What is this? Uh -huh. And then I see what happened. And then I just kept seeing it over and over again. Everybody kept posting it over and yeah. over and over again. I'm like, yo, this shit is crazy. Yeah. And then I started looking at the situation. I didn't even know what exactly what happened. I had no idea of contact right. or nothing. Over time, you know, I, I, I found out what happened. And I found out uh, the whole, the footage of what happened. And I was just amazed. I was completely and totally amazed. And um, and then I heard a lot of commentary about it. You know, um, right. Professor Truth spoke about it. Uh, the Black Authority spoke about it. <laughs> Who's the same guy. You know what I mean? Um, Kevin Samuels spoke about it. Huh? Same, same black truth, black authority, same person. <laughs> Live, you're streaming on the black channel.net. This is Jay Black Mike. Uh, what did he say? He said, uh, join us. <laughs> and join us, you will. But go ahead, go yeah. ahead. My bad. But yeah, so, so yeah, so, um, after just thinking about it, man, and, and just seeing all of that stuff about it. At first, I was in a state of shock, like, wow, like, why did this yeah. happen? How did this happen? And then as the day went on, I started learning more details. Like, I learned that, that it was completely, totally produced by Black people. Um, I learned this like, is like... He was like, like the, damn. When you heard that, he was like, yeah. oh, ain't this about a bitch? <laughs> yeah, and on top of that, too, Samuel L. Jackson got an um, a Oscar. Denzel finally oh, so got an Oscar. Oh, I didn't even know. Because yeah. all we talked about was Slapgate. Yeah. I didn't even know when they both got Oscars. Yeah, and you know, when we was young, we used to always have that conversation. We used to always, like, be mad because I think Malcolm X and um, yeah. there was another Tom Hanks movie it came out at the same time. Um, and Denzel Forrest was Gump. so powerful as Malcolm X. We're like, how he didn't get the Oscar? They gave it to Tom Hanks for some... I think Forrest Gump. Corny shit. Was it? No. Wasn't it Forrest Gump? 
So now Denzel finally got his flowers. So I was I was just like I was just mad. I was mad that everybody like you know I'm a, I'm a big yeah. Samuel Jackson fan. I'm a huge Denzel fan. They finally get what they deserve. Just for this dumb shit. No, nah, but um, didn't uh Forrest Gump beat out Malcolm X, right? I think it was Forrest Gump. Yeah. Yeah. It, which was a great movie, but it was a, it was a great movie. But that the, 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 the handicapped dude Denzel's performance was way better than to me, better than Tom yeah. performance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Malcolm X is that was riveting, but that wasn't uh, Denzel's first Oscar though. No, but I mean, I was mad because that year his performance was so strong, and I'm like, what else was more powerful than that performance? Oh, okay. Because they gave because Denzel got the Oscar for um, training, training day. day. Yeah. And then so Samuel, this is, is his first Oscar. I think I thought didn't he get I a think support? Samuel Jackson is his first Oscar, yeah. Really? I gotta fact yeah, I check that. So. Let me let me fact check real quick. I, I believe yeah. it. So go ahead. So, so what you was thinking of, you didn't think it was fake or real? Or you were shocked by it? Go ahead. Yeah, I was I was definitely shocked by it. Um people were saying that it was fake. Um I don't think it was fake. I just think that Will Smith never threw a punch in his life before. So this shit looked great. He yeah. did Ali. He had the train. He was man, that wasn't over. He wasn't really booking no fucking. He was going tss, 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 tss. when you do this, tss, tss, that make the punches come out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if you see if you see Denzel and Hurricane Carter, you box. Yeah. Will Smith as Ali, he spent most of his time just talking shit. He didn't really do a whole yeah. lot of boxing. He said, he said, Come on now, George Foreman. You can do better than that. Your hands too slow for some reason, George. <laughs> Hit me, George. You don't know what you're doing, George. I'm gonna do something. Well, he wasn't with really these doing no. He wasn't doing no ill boxing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny as hell, man. Yeah. So what? So you didn't. So go ahead. What was your so, your, 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 your far reaching thoughts when you seen that? Like as far as well, let's matter of fact, before we even go far, let's just yeah, go yeah, away. Go what you think was going through Will's mind at that moment? And why you think everybody no. was so? Why you think there was so many people who approved? Like it? I said. So many people, what was the second part of the question? I'm sorry. So yeah, the second people. part was, why do you think so many people was at first approving of what he did? A lot of females were approving it. Um, Because it's that a lot of females approve of it because a lot of females get abused in general. You know, and society as a whole is, is seen as being misogynistic. Women are at a disadvantage. Men are abusing them. So when you see a guy... And on the surface, it looks like he's protecting his women, woman rather. Women, women like that that bullshit. Regardless, like yeah, you should like the fact that a man is protecting a woman, but you but the fact that like a man man has the propensity to totally lose his cool over something relatively minor or something that he could fight back the same exact way without being physical. I I, I got an issue with that, man. Mm-hmm. That because that 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 sends the young wrong message to our youth. Our younger women are going to expect these young boys to fight over and damn near be willing to kill each other just because her feelings are hurt. See, this is this, this is the issue with this situation. They keep com- conflating physical abuse with jokes, and, and and I could see if it was an egregious joke. Getting that uh, her sexual proclivities were August, like Jada Pinkett, GI Jane too, comes out in the August. You know what I'm saying? It comes in August. You know what else comes in August? Jada. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been worse. The point is, it could have been way worse. And a lot of comedians are doing it right now, like Lavelle yeah. Crawford. You see yeah. Lavelle Crawford, his latest ah, shit. I see that. Hey, we could hey we could screen share. You want you, you want you care to screen share? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. and check it out. Because right. yeah, this stuff I got, I, I can't explain it. I just got to show it, man. Jesus Damn. Christ, yo! Now we're gonna have to go around smacking everybody. Like that's what she that's what was, he got to smack everybody. Everybody, yeah. and these dudes about to go in. I know they about to go in, bro. You don't even know the half. Hold on, let me find it real quick. Ain't gonna take me but a second. So that, that, that that's what I I just have an issue with like like comes so I don't want to call out too many comedian celebrity names because 
um, I'm going to be working with them potentially. So, but just a lot of like female comics supporting it. That's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. And yo, man, like it just sends a poor message because young girls going to want uh, uh, dudes to, to fight over nothing. And then young, young boys going to feel pressured. Like that's what they have to do as a man. Over the most small, mundane things. Whatever happened to the old saying, sticks and stones might break my bones, but words will never hurt me, which isn't true, which isn't true. Words can hurt you, but you can do a lot more immediate damage and get in a lot more trouble with the fist. Yes, psychologically, you can mess people up, but we talking about, you ain't going to go to the slammer just by calling somebody a bitch or yeah. saying somebody going bald. But slapping somebody for saying somebody's going bald. The judge throwing you in the jail. The judge, yeah. I, I, I said your wife bald headed. You punched me in my face. We both from court. Yo, he, he called my wife bald headed. He's like, yeah. So call him bald headed. Look at his head. Call him that back. You can't just yeah. assault people because your feelings is hurt. And I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, getting yeah. tired of them conflating these, these two things. It's bullshit, man. Yeah. And on top of that, too, as a, as a man in a relationship, when they talk about protection, protection is multi-dimensional. Like right. protecting your wife don't just mean fighting over her. You gotta yeah. be there for her as well. Yeah. If your ass right. go to jail, if your ass get killed out here doing some dumb shit. Exactly. The fact your your absence is a failure to protect too. So they're talking about he did the right thing, quote unquote, protecting her, but at the same time, what about his responsibility to be there for her long term? Hey. Exactly. But that's the that's one of the things that I took away from it was the fact that we live in a culture that really sees black men as disposable. Because yeah. at the end of the, at the end of the day, Will Smith get locked. A lot of people feel that Jada will just keep it moving. A lot of she, females you don't think she okay would. Do them, She's, he fought for I me, mean, he shot for me, he killed for me. He get locked, he get killed. They gonna keep that shit moving. And I see, no. I've seen it happen before. Where I, I used like I told you before, I used mm -hmm. to work with a lot of young men in the community. They were in detention. They were in mental health facilities. They were mm -hmm. in transitional living programs. A lot of them, I would say 85% of the dudes I work with were mm -hmm. in those situations because they did the exact same thing Will Smith did. They ain't got Will Smith money. Yeah. No, it, 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 exactly, yo. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, how could you protect your wife and your family? And I'm basically saying what you said, but how could you effectively protect your wife and your family if you're willing to lose your cool over something that's relatively easy to work out. I'm freezing up again, huh? Damn. Oh, uh, yeah. Mother... Hold on. Well, you know, regardless, can you see the share screen? Yeah, I can see the share screen. All right, I'm, I'm going to play the share screen and then I'm going to try to figure out this camera stuff while this is playing. So this is a right. bell response right here. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, DJ. Cut that nigga off. Just play a little bit just in case I say something offensive and that nigga walk up here. You hear me? Boy, nigga, I played yeah, your you. song, nigga. Right, cool. Let me let me live, nigga. Da 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> How that nigga dance with aliens and slap a nigga? That's some bullshit. Is, is Chris Rock an alien? We don't know it because he walks. That shit keep running through my mind. I'm like, did this nigga just slap the fuck out of this nigga? Fair use. Right Fair now, use. white people shit. Cause that's white people shit. You know that is. We all watch. We watch. We watch to see the two niggas. That's <laughs> not. <laughs> you hear me, Devin? Ain't hey, that nigga uh, movie ever been in that bitch that for color purple? Big, big, Whoopi Goldberg, for ugly motherfucker. Act <laughs> Danny Glover, for male ugly motherfucker. They ain't never had baby boy. Baby boy, no one should have been at the Oscars. As much as BT put that bitch on, that should have been at the Oscars a long time ago. This nigga done slapped the fuck out of him. We ain't gonna never get the guy. I ain't gonna never get a chance to go to goddamn Oscar now. 
I can drop white folks off and go about my goddamn business. <laughs> Sorry, no niggas allowed. And they can say it. Hey, you, uh, hey, I understand. Uh, that nigga moment was a nigga moment that's going to go down in nigga history. Will, 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 Will Smith was like a nigga too. Slapped a nigga and then came up and got a trophy for it. That's how you win, though, nigga. What? Pow! They <laughs> laid on that nigga showed his actors here. I just, when the devil, when the devil come at your pipe now, nah, nigga, the devil's in you. When you got up and walked out, and you don't even go to church, nigga. You don't even know when the devil already in you, because that was all a devil move right there, nigga. When you get your ass up in a brand new tuxedo and some fresh-ass motherfucking shoes, walk your well-manicured ass up there. <laughs> and I know Chris Brown said, I know this nigga ain't gonna slap the fuck out of me. <laughs> and then that Chris Brown hit the arm behind it. I know this nigga ain't gonna slap the fuck out of me. We both have on tuxedos, man. <laughs> <laughs> damn, that nigga stood there for a minute and then the steam kicked in like, God damn, that nigga just slapped the fuck out of me in front of all these white people. This <laughs> rock got a reboot like a motherfucker. That's, that's called a reboot, nigga. That nigga, he hit a white slap. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. Not in front of the white people. You ought to do that shit right in front. You could have pulled a nigga behind the curtain and slapped the nigga. They would have known what happened. All other five niggas in the audience was like, oh my God. Did this nigga just do this? <laughs> and white folks sat back and just like, well, that's what they do. <laughs> white folks were so happy you that niggas did that shit. See, I told you, let them in. And that's what happened. Give him his fucking award, tell him that bring his black ass back. <laughs> All over his wife. Man, nigga, you, I mean, I understand he love his wife. I love her too because he know he loved Jada Pinker for one reason. That woman besides being his wife, she saved him a lot of money on hair products. She ain't got to... <laughs> Fuck that nigga, I know she got out of pizza. We didn't know till the day afterward. Well, she been bald headed a long goddamn time. Don't you up in niggas try to get up here and be shocked. Oh, fake ass niggas trying to act like she wasn't bald before this shit. I hate niggas always trying to ride on somebody's coat. Fuck that shit, nigga. Some more bad motherfucker got her hair cut short and beautiful. She ain't tripping and shit. How the fuck you gonna do? No, I bet you want to look like a mannequin, and that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Tired of motherfuckers trying to fake the fuck. Oh, he loved her. No, he didn't. No, he the fuck did. Nigga, if I'm Chris Rock, I gotta put nine in his ass. Cat, 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 cat. Yeah, we already there. We might as well take it to the next nigga level. Say <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get jiggy with pow, 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 pow. That's it. That's it. Damn, this whole shit. Freezing. Let me try to. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. None of this shit responded. Like I said, so Chris Rock's brother went. Oh, All right, let me pause this. Pause that. Let me get that out of there. Damn. We <sighs> we're back. I apologize. My apologies. My my computer started going on a fritz. I had to do a <laughs> reboot. And then Dev got, he had to take out the trash. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I was just listening to some of these. Um, uh, what we were talking about was, what, what did we end off on? Um, oh, we were leaving off on co well, comedians going in on him now. He oh, yeah. I showed you Lavelle Crawford. You saw it was hilarious, even though my computer kind of malfunctioning and freezing kind of took away from it. But but that's just a small sample. Andrew Schultz did something. Like all kinds of comedians. This is what we do. When something goes down in the world, we go and talk about it. Like, like I had this one bit. I went a different direction. I was saying, um, I was reading the Bible, right? And uh, there was a story 
of these group of kids in this school, these badass kids. Oh, yeah, I seen that. I seen that. Yep. And they kept making fun of this bald headed kid. Like, go up, you bald head, you bald headed mother, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And so, what did the Lord do? He possessed two bears, and the bears came down from the mountains and ate the kids. He killed a group of kids for making fun of another kid that has a bald head. Yeah. Then I started thinking, y'all. I was like, yo, that situation that happened at the Oscars, Slapgate, that was God's will. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to play on words. I do that. I think I'm I'm proud yeah, of that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm proud of that particular. And I and I and I added a tag to it. I said, Chris Rock got off easy. Cause in the Bible days, like you would get eaten for talking about some bald heads. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? God could have sent some pit bulls at the Chris Rock, man. <laughs> Imagine you make fun of J.D. Pickett's bald head and all of a sudden four pit bulls <laughs> just run through the audience and just rip them apart. Hashtag God's will. <laughs> <laughs> but see how I did it? Um, I didn't make fun of anybody. Right. I made, I didn't come at Will. I didn't come at Chris Rock. I didn't come at Jay. As a matter of fact, I kind of defended her because I'm, I'm basically saying making fun of bald and I got a bald head. I'm sensitive to that shit. But making fun of bald headed people brings you ramifications. Mm-hmm. And the Bible got to kill your ass, but he ki- he killed kids over it. <laughs> now, now, he could have possessed the parents to teach them the right way and not to make fun mm-hmm. of children. Nah, God was like, "Fuck that, man." <laughs> he could have made it. He could have made the kids just die in their sleep. You know what I'm yep. saying? You want the bears to do it? You feel me? <laughs> nah, nah. I want these little ass seven year olds to suffer. <laughs> imagine, you imagine that you like you like the seminary, the kids playing in the playground and making fun of the ball of the kid. Then all of a sudden, you see like these two ass bears just come and just eat all the bad kids, but like spare the ball headed one, like. Ball headed kid, why you get spirit? Spirit, he's like, I don't know. Maybe it's God's will. <laughs> 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 but I, I just went a whole different direction. I didn't want to. I didn't want to attack anybody. I just wanted to make. It. If I attacked anything, because you know I'm not about the Bible. You ain't about the Bible either. Like the Bible got weird ass, inconsistent, ridiculous stories like that, <laughs> where. The guy, they want you to turn her that she can be gentle and love your neighbor. But here you have a God that won't use no logic, will just possess two savage beasts, strong, powerful beasts, more powerful than the strongest man to kill little kids for making jokes. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> he could have used anything. He could have used yeah. chipmunks if he wanted to. Yeah. He could have been gentle. Yeah, he bear. This motherfucker used bears. He could use one bear. That would could use one. He used two to make sure that nobody get away. Because if one eating you, cause maximum damage. Yeah, if one eating you, like, two other kids can run away. He got to keep going back and forth. But if you got two handling the job, you know what I'm saying? He just bite <laughs> one. One try to run away. He go over there, grab the other one. Oh, rah, rah, rah. I see the other one over there. Rah, 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 rah. And then he over there. <laughs> Yeah, but it's just to me, it's a it's a perfect representation of the hyperbole of what Will Smith did. Just like yeah. God could have did a million other things to teach those children a lesson without them getting mauled. And notice it was she bears too. It's dissing women. It's dissing females, <laughs> saying hey, these 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 savage creatures that's going to eat the kids. If y'all don't do right in school or make fun of all the kids, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. but there's yeah. so many other ways that could have happened in a more civil manner. And our Lord mm-hmm. and Creator allegedly, that was his solution for that problem. Mm-hmm. It was a ridiculous response to something that was relatively small. And that's the same thing with the Will Smith. Slapgate situation. It was a ridiculous response for something that was relatively small. And, and I'm listening to these different panelists and these different uh, simps, soft shoe black simps. It was just so offensive. He's coming at her physical appearance 
We know how black women feel about that. It's not making fun of her. Sometimes when I roast people, like whenever I compare a woman to somebody else, it's always a woman that looks like I always compare her to an attractive woman. So mm -hmm. she doesn't get get offended. I never mm -hmm. threw out a roast and compared a woman to somebody who wasn't attractive. I, I think that's in poor taste. You know what I'm saying? But if she's attractive and she has something similar, a similar uh, uh, feature that stands out that another famous person does, yeah, I'm going to make that. But they have to be attractive. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And in that instance, Demi Moore, fine as hell, mm -hmm. strong, was able to compete with the men and became a Navy SEAL, I think, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's not... It's just on the surface. Nobody knew she had a power. Like, like uh, uh, Lavelle Crawford said, we ain't find out she had alopecia until tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? None of us, none of us knew. I know that shit. Because I, I, I don't follow her. I, I don't, that's what I'm saying. Not a lot of people really follow her like that where everybody would know that. Like, I had no idea until, until after right. Will smacked her. That's when I found out. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Smack Chris Rice when I found yeah. out she had, I had no idea. And, and here's the thing: like some people will say, "That's his wife." You can't talk about her. That's his wife. Since when did being a spouse, namely a wife, make you exempt from ribbing and roasting? When? when and not only that, put on. I'm, I'm gonna stop right there because there's another point too. I want to bring out. Why are they saying that? that he's supposed to like act that way when that's his wife where when people make fun of will she'd be dying laughing people make fun of him she don't slap nobody she'd be dying laughing as a matter of fact she initiates the jokes yeah she yeah. went on oprah and i, I got i want to look this up to know specifically but she was saying like how like will doesn't basically satisfy her let me let me go jada pick it Oprah, this is Will. Let me see what pops up on that. Uh, oh, my man. Basically, um, they, they, they were just having intimacy, intimacy issues. I don't know the specifics, but she, it was a conversation that she was not supposed to be having with Oprah Winfrey. Nah, Ain't no way in hell, public, you my wife. Yeah. I'm worth 400 million. I could have any beautiful chick in the world that I want to. And he probably was doing his thing, but I'm just saying on a surface level, he carries himself like that's my wife, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And y'all, that's supposed to be your best friend, X, Y, Z. I can understand going to a therapist in private and, and hashing some things out or trying to figure some stuff out. But you're going on Oprah Winfrey, a woman that's not married, never been married, and you discussing all this stuff and you, you, you're you getting at our intimacy, this is something that we should be discussing with a therapist, not fucking right. on Oprah. And you by yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah, you he know, ain't there to defend it, himself or nothing. And, 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 and like I said, to go back to what I was saying a couple minutes ago, there's this big saying, you can't talk about her. That's his wife. But you never hear people say, you can't talk about him. That's her husband. Never. You you never type that in Google. You won't see it. Nothing I know. Pop I'm up. not gonna waste my time. You know what I mean? Like, like now, and, and and it's not like yes, we got to pet our wives. People talking shit, blah blah blah. But people ain't just randomly every single day going around fucking with people's wives though. Nah. Like yo, oh, you got a wife, huh? Yo, she a bitch. Fucking bitch ass wife. Every time they see somebody holding hands, like yo, I hate y'all holding hands. Your wife ugly as fuck, nigga. That don't. You would think that's what that's what's happening. Yeah, it was a lighthearted joke in an environment and atmosphere where the people that's in the front row, they're gonna get ribbed with. Yeah, that's tradition. Like you were saying, you mean you was having a conversation before? Yeah. That's a comedian tradition. It's a, it's a comedic tradition. And, and, and if and if you don't want jokes and things of that nature at the Oscars, the comedians just stop going. Just boycott. Like, fuck it. I ain't going no more. Yeah. Let's see how good the Oscars are without somebody making jokes. We're just going to keep it formal. And uh, yeah. next Oscar, blah, 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 blah. That shit going to be like a, a theocratic ministries at school meeting, man. <laughs>
Yo, remember how boring a Thursday mm-hmm. means was? Mm-hmm. Boring. That like sometimes the Sundays would be all right. Sometimes ain't not again a good talk, whatever. But the Thursday, my nigga, after the like, cause even the academy school was okay because you practice it, you're learning your speech. But when they had to talk after that shit, yo, that is some of the because Thursday, what do they do? They usually like talk about the numbers and things of that nature, like mm-hmm. how many people did this, how many recruits they got, how much money was generated. It's just like a real, yeah. So they they, they we're talking about Jehovah's Witnesses in their meetings. Sorry, me and Devin, <laughs> I'm talking in cold, but they they go more. to church like five times a week, like Wednesday, Thursdays, well three times, Wednesdays, Thursdays. And Sundays, that's when I used to go. And they go to like fill service on Saturdays. Fill service is when they go door to door. But Thursday is the is the week they would teach you how to speak, which I didn't mind. That's the reason why me and Devin have the skills that we have today as far as public speaking. We learned 90% of that being Jehovah's yeah. Witnesses. You know what I'm saying? But they also had the second meeting on Thursday that was just the most boring, meaningless BS, yo. you know what I mean, and yeah. basically you're hey. trying to get the Oscars to that level. We just saw. And uh, next up for the Oscar, uh, King Richard, Will Smith, and the winner is Will Smith, King Richard. <laughs> so uh, no jokes, no nothing. Here you go, Will Smith. How do you feel? Um. Well, okay, I can't use emotions anymore. Because now we're taking away comedy and everything. But you know, you know what though? You know what's crazy? Huh? This is this is the part that shows you everybody hypocrisy. Mm-hmm. Like analy- analyze it from this perspective. Didn't they just spend the last five years telling us that gender is fluid and gender roles don't exist? Yeah. So people remember gender real fast when they want black men to do something. When they want us to die for something or kill for something, all of a sudden everybody remember what gender is. Everybody remember all of a sudden men's gender roles. They remember all of a sudden that a man's supposed to be a man. For the last five years, you've been hearing, oh, toxic masculinity. Oh, no, black men are just toxic. Black men, you, you, j- j- uh, uh, they, they call us uh, cis, cis, cis males. They don't say yep. men no more. It's cis males. Yep. These cis males are so dangerous. But now when you want us to stand up and fight, all of a sudden we black men. When shit go wrong or when you want something, we're black men. Otherwise, manhood is toxic, masculinity is toxic, and gen- and gender is totally fluid. So what if at that moment, Will Smith gender was fluid and he didn't want to smack? He didn't want to do nothing because his gender was fluid at that moment. What if all of a sudden a black woman need protection and my gender is fluid and I can't protect it because at that moment I become a woman? That's a that's a deep ass issue. Yeah, man. like y'all been trying. That shows that that shows y'all don't even believe the shit. Y'all, these goddamn liberals don't even believe half the shit they be saying. Nah, gender is fluid. It, so it, we it, need it, black men to do something. It's, it's just like the COVID situation, COVID and the vaccines and the masks. They 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 just constantly change rules and move the goalposts to 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 yeah. fit their narrative or whatever narratives they're trying to create. Like it before, like I think of. At first, they said we don't need masks. Then it was like we bullshit. You do need masks. They need a double mask. They need a shot. They need a booster shot. You know what I'm saying? Then you need booster shots every six months. Oh, oh, and then if you got the shots, you can't catch and spread it. If you have it, you can't catch and spread it. You need vaccine cards. I, it, you know what I'm saying? Like they just keep moving and augmenting and changing things. Just to like justify they BS man, and that's the same thing with with, with this um, slapgate situation. Now, my question to you is because we started we started to dive into it. Like everybody knows yeah, yeah. pretty much what happened. This uh, particular part, I wanted to get more into the psychoanalysis. Um, okay. Do you think? Do you think Will thought he was protecting his wife when he did that? Like, what what's your opinion? Good question. Um, I think more than anything, Will was trying to protect himself. I think that Will um, has been the subject to Jada's disappointment for years. She's even said publicly he can't sexually satisfy her. She yeah, said that crazy. it's frustrating being with him. She said that um, when she's around him, she gets sick of the fact that it's always about him. So this is a person who has been subject to her disappointment. So he's trying to he's trying to protect himself from her disappointment. He wants her approval. 
And so at that moment, this was an opportunity, not even really to protect her. He was trying to protect himself because he knew if he didn't get up, he was going to have that shit thrown in his face at some point. Yeah. Just like yeah. you, when they when they in bed together, that's intimate. That's supposed to be between your husband and wife. Yeah. They're telling everybody he they ain't business. shit in the bed. So imagine dealing with that level of not only not only disappointment, because she's disappointed in him, which will hurt any husband, mm -hmm. but she's also like letting the whole world know like she's trying to attack him for being who he is. So in that moment, he was trying to be something that he wasn't. Will Smith ain't never done nothing like that before. No. I mean, yeah, he, like one time it was a situation where somebody threw some water in his face and he like smacked him a little bit. But, but that's, that's different, different because he was assaulted. So that's a that's a natural response, you know? Right, exactly, exactly. Well, like some situation. dude, some white guy kissed him on a red carpet. Yeah. He's like, yo, get off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's different. That's as different any of us would react that way. Yeah, but he's, take he's that trying to... Hundred foot walk on, 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 on the stage, Oscar stage. Like you had yeah. five, ten seconds to like be like, all right, let me fall back, or at least change my mind. Whisper, he could have whispered in Chris Rock ear, like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, can we please just stay off my wife? Um, if you don't, I'm gonna fuck you up. Like, like say it in his ear or some <laughs> shit like that. Or say that from the street. You keep talking, I'm gonna fuck yeah. you up. Whatever. It's, yeah. it's niggerish. But it's not assault. Yeah, it's just right, an right, FCC right. fine. But now, you know, they got the, the, the courts. The, 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 uh, even though um, Chris Rock doesn't wear the press charges, the, the DA of California, they can still push charges. Because this is what, I, I don't know, I don't want Will to go to jail. But there got to be some type of backlash and ramification, which is starting to happen. Because uh, from what I heard, he was producing like some new movie for Netflix. Yeah, Netflix I heard about that. Yeah. They pulled out of that. Uh, he removed himself uh, from one of the uh, Academy voters. So he's no longer a part of the Academy. So he's yeah. doing some things. So he resigned from that. Netflix pulled out. So things are starting to, to topple. Like people were yeah. saying, when you would say like Samuel Jackson, Denzel, you would put Will right along those lines, oh, yeah. meaning like not yeah. only great actors, but just great black uh, entertainers in society who pretty much uh, haven't had any public discrepancies basically their entire career. Will was on that level. Mm -hmm. But by Will doing that, he put himself a step lower now. Yeah. Because he did some dumb shit. Those two guys did. He could never, he could never get there again. He will, he will never great actor, but it's always going to be that little yeah. asterisk. Yep, that's true. And like, it is, you it never is, heard of Cindy Portier do no shit like that. Like a uh, yeah. great great eight time black actor, or just actors in general, like Meryl Streep or yeah. Tom Hanks. Even though Lawrence, I think he has Lawrence some Lawrence Fishburne. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Lawrence Fishburne. Like, Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. Lawrence Fishburne probably passed him because of that bullshit. I mean, you know, yeah. what I mean? not yeah. acting wise, but. No, no, no. Because Laura Fishburne, his daughter did porn, so you got taken by that. <laughs> Montana Fishburne, he and he disowned he disowned her too because of the shit. So he would he got he has some controversial shit. You can look up his daughter's porn right now. It's not that bad either. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, but man. yeah, but he was but he was no matter what though he was Othello. He killed Othello. Nobody can outact Laura yeah, Fishburne. Yeah, he was Othello. Fishburne. You see his Othello. <laughs> Nah, I never saw Othello. Yo, you gotta see that movie. Home Othello was so mind blowing. Home acting was you know, that Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. he, he had the accent, everything. Home was phenomenal as a Shakespearean actor. Yo. It's not he ain't get no that, um, nobody on his level. Yet. He ain't get no Oscar. He ain't get shit. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's hard as hell for niggas to get Oscars, man. <laughs> yo, yeah. Be acting. Denzel should got like at least five of them shits, man. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. And Sam Sam should have like two or three. Yeah. Couple flicks. He, oh, I, I can't think of one flick where Sam Jack was bad ever. That, that one. But one thing I will say, I think the one thing that kills Sam is that he's typecast. He's pretty much the same dude. I'm gonna say, he's the yeah, same guy that eventually talks like this. Yeah, yeah. Like every movie they want him to. I love it though. <laughs> huh? What'd you say? I said every movie they want him to be Jules from Pulp Fiction. Yeah, just like Keanu Reeves. Like, oh, yeah, the Matrix. Like he's a set or Nicolas Cage. Like yeah, it's certain people or Christopher Walken. It's certain people they the same guy. Yeah, every I think movie. Nick Cage the worst though. 
Yeah. Then he got he got an Oscar though. Yeah, he can actually act too. He was in this movie. You ever seen that movie? Uh, me and Aunt used to always watch it. Adaptation. Nah, I never saw it. There was a, it was a, it was a movie about the movie was about Charles Kaufman, who's a Hollywood writer. Yeah. And Holly, he was trying to write the movie, so the movie was about him trying to write the movie and his yeah. stress trying to write the film. Nick Nick Cage played um, Charles Kaufman. It was about him trying to figure out how to. It was dope, yo. Where he where he blended oh, reality right. and fantasy in his head. That shit was fire. I'm gonna have to check that out. Uh, say, say it again. I'm gonna type it in my phone. I want to check it out. It's called adaptation. Adaptation. No, I've all his. It came out 2002. I, I've always um. I never thought he was a great actor, but I've mm-hmm. always enjoyed his movies, though. Right, right, right. Except Ghost Rider. I like Ghost Rider. Yeah, I heard that shit was terrible. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to yell. His awards and nomination. I I could have sworn he got an Oscar. Okay. Yeah, he got one. He sure did. He got nominated twice. You know, he got uh, a Screen Actors Guild. He got one. Golden Globe. He got one. He got nominated for two Academy Awards, two British Academy, four Golden Globes. So he's he got too many uh, awards and nominations to be considered a bad actor. It's right, just yeah. that whatever he gets picked for, you know what I mean. They they just want that typecast Nicolas Cage role. He like fuck yeah. it, we get this bread. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I don't think he's. I think I, I've always enjoyed his acting. Well, he wanted he won an Academy Award for Leaving Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Yep, and he was nominated for adaptation. Okay. That yeah, he was nominated. So he was real good. Adaptation yeah, yeah. So I life. believe you. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a screenshot on my phone. Check that out. Yeah, but Will Smith kind of like he separate he separated himself. From 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 the from those elites, and it's just sad he he could never bring it back. But um, but you said he was you said you thought he was protecting his um his own image. Um, yeah, same thing. I can agree. It was it was it was an ego thing. Um, getting punked, getting punked your whole life. He just saw that as an opportunity to finally stand up for himself. Like you were saying earlier, Jada Pinkett. Always publicly humiliated him, roasted him, laughed at jokes that others made about him at his mm-hmm. expense plenty of times. Um, aired out dirty laundry, the whole August House Cena situation. And not once did you ever see Will hop up and chastise her or just say, Baby, you know, you're kind of wrong. We should probably keep that to ourselves. That's I'd rather you not put our stuff out like that, you know, like that. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'd rather you not constantly make jokes at my expense. If if that bothered him, I don't know if it did or if it didn't. If he can handle it and she can't, that's cool. But see, we don't know. We're just seeing her get upset because jokes are made about her. At a small, minor joke at her expense. But your mm-hmm. husband, you can make all the jokes in the world. And everybody can laugh at her, him, and you can laugh with them, but that's okay. But nobody can't, but your husband can have a small laugh at you. Your husband can't laugh at one minor joke directed towards you, but you can laugh at thousands directed towards him. So yeah, that's you tell he ain't fucking you right. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's not even no that's joke. Crazy. That's some you're supposed that's to leave the bitch at that point or or, or higher. Three big buff niggas to smash. <laughs> Three big buff, you know, just do every. What the fuck? What the fuck? Your mind go that way? Because, because you know what? You just gotta. Hey, if I can't, if I can't handle you, um, I'm gonna pay three people that will. <laughs> no pun intended. Ooh! And then, and then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I can't handle my wife, but these three dudes. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just joking. You know. But yeah, my mind, I'm, I'm pouring it out. That's what it is. I got to start watching. But, yeah, your mind immediately went all the way. Yeah, it went all the way extreme. Yeah, I can't handle you, but I know people who will. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, but it's like, it's okay for her to do all that, but it's not okay. So when I see that slap in situation, first of all, I think that was slap was meant more for Jada than Chris. But that's the only way it, it, the joke came from Chris. Will was complicit in the joke because he laughed, cuts his eye to the left, sees that his wife was upset, 
So he has a, a moment of thinking of all the possibilities of what he has to deal with at home. So in his mind, to rec- I really want to slap you for fucking up the fun. I'm not going to slap my wife, but somebody got to get slapped. <laughs> so let me go up on stage and slap this nigga. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's that, that, that's, that was just frustration, in my opinion, and it was meant for her. Obviously, you can't slap her, so you slap him. Just like the episode in the boondocks with Usher, when mm-hmm. um, Tom, the lawyer or whatever, thought that she was cheating with Usher or whatever. And uh, the Cat Williams character, the pimp named Slickback, Slickback, he's like, man, if you try all these different methods and nothing works to get her attention, then you're just going to have to smack her. He's like, oh, <laughs> I, I can't. I, like you said, well, you wanted to, has not smacking her helped you out? He's like, no. He said, well, there you go. <laughs> so he sees his wife on a date with Usher, but his wife was on a date with Usher for the sake of uh, his daughter. His daughter wanted to meet Usher anywhere. So he's like, Sarah, her name was Sarah. He's like, Sarah, bitch, get your <laughs> ass in the car. And she was like, no, blah, 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 blah. So he raises his hand and you think he's going to smack Sarah, but he snaps Usher. Usher. Yeah. So that's a perfect parallel of what just happened. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he The energy was really meant, was supposed to be for his wife. His wife put him through more bullshit than anybody in his life. Because he's been with her 30 years. He's only 50. So he Man. had to deal with 30, um, damn near 30 years, or 20, 25 years of bullshit, half his life. Feel me? Damn. So that was that's all crazy. pent up. Because that's the thing. When you build up pressure... And it's about to explode. Who knows who is going to hit? It's true. Who knows? A volcano when it explodes? Yeah, there's this village of bad people over here. But when it explodes, the shit go everywhere. And whoever's in that yeah. vicinity, that's who's going to get incinerated. And that's what happened. And um, on a deep level, I think that Chris Rock was actually protecting Will Smith when he did that. Or defending Will Smith. Mm-hmm. Because she makes the jokes... All the time at Will's expense, and he never says he doesn't even say like stop. Well, okay, that's enough, babe. He don't say yeah. nothing. I've never had ha- heard him use a negative or conjecture or adjective or whatever, or just a negative command to her. I've never mm-hmm. heard him say no, stop, don't. I can't think of any word negative in front of Jada that he's ever said to Jada. Right, right. Or or sure. a call to actions to not do something. Please don't do that. Please don't say that. I feel X, Y, Z. I don't never heard of never. it. Never. So Chris and their friends, they're definitely friends because they got plenty of pictures hugging and holding each other. Um, <clears throat> uh, in the early 2000s, there was a show called My Wife and Kids with Damon Wayans and, and Tisha Campbell. I never, I never watched the show. I think at that time I was watching like a lot of HBO stuff, like The Wire, Oz, shit yeah. like that. So yeah. I was like, I was like 24, 22, 22. So I was like past sitcoms, like mentally. So that's why a lot of that shit, early 2000, I don't remember. But anyway, Tony Rock was a cast member. Chris Rock's little okay. brother on mm-hmm. that show. Now, so mm-hmm. the, the Rocks and the Smiths, they know each other. This ain't, yeah, hell yeah. This ain't foreign to yeah. These ain't two strangers. And some, and it's sad because sometimes. You can do stuff like that to people you know more than people you don't sometimes, too, yo. Sometimes we treat people we know worse than people that we don't, which is unfortunate. But I think that was, in some weird way, that was Chris Rock, like, damn, damn, brother, you never say anything against Jada. She's the one that always looks good in every situation, and you look bad. You my homie. You got my little brother job. I'm going to defend you. On the Oscar <laughs> evening. <laughs> How's my Chris Rock, man? <laughs> That's not bad. It's not yeah. bad. <laughs> I never knew I had one, but like, I'll be hearing them so much now. I'm starting to. I know, right? Starting to get yeah, a little. Let me, let, me, huh? let me ask this question. Let's, let's, let's think this, since we go into the psychology of it, yeah, yeah. We, we analyze Will, we analyze the community. Nobody's <laughs> analyzed Jada yet. What do you think Jada was thinking? At that moment, what do you what do you think is a psychology in this in in, in Jada Pinkett? She's person? she's tough to crack because who the fuck? It's like she was never in love with Will in the first place. If Tupac doesn't die, Will Smith and Jada ain't together. When did they get married? Let me let me let me fact check this real quick. Let it was definitely after Tupac died. Let me let me yeah, let me. I just want to fact check before. I, 
talk too much. Uh, Will Smith I'm trying to see when her him and he tried to holler at her. She dissed him. Remember? Okay, yeah, they got married. I don't even know. I know he tried to holler at salt. I mean pepper, salt and pepper. Mm-hmm. Pepper dissed him because she like yeah, third niggas yep. and shit. Yeah, yeah. Jada dissed um, him too for the same. Reason. They got married in 1997. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Personal, personal life. Damn, Mary. Blah 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 blah. The two divorced in '95 because he, he divorced his first wife, Jada Mary. It's, it just says December 31st, 1997. So Pop died September 1996. And that's another thing. If Jada was so in love with Pac, he he passed away in September. So you mean to tell me she married a year in a couple of months? Not not met the dude. No. Married him. So yeah. between Tupac dying within those the September 15 months. This is September. Know, yeah. Within 15 months, you mean to tell me 15 months, Pac died one of the greatest influential entertainers of all time. So you know she was really connected with him. He's a he's a, 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 a he's an influential. But magnetic motherfucker that a lot of people loved, right? He died. So you mean to tell me within those 15 months you met a person who's the antithesis of Tupac? Opposite. And and every way. Rap skills, looks, height, hair, image, image, skin tone. It's totally different. Temperament. And you met that within 15 months? Decided to, you fell in love with that individual and got married to that person 15 months after Pop died. Not and, and not saying this should be a time frame on that, but I bring it up because here we are 26 eight, years later after Tupac passed away. And you're still talking about him. You, you're yeah. saying your daughter Willow wrote a letter one time saying or some type of post. Please, Tupac, come back. I know you're alive somewhere. Come back so my mother can finally be happy. You, you, you ever hear that? Yeah. Yeah. You, heard, you, you heard that before? Yeah. So, yeah, so so I think a part of that, too, is I think the trauma of losing Pop was so intense. You know, because he, he died by violence. He didn't yeah, die because yeah, yeah. of sickness or something. He died by violence. Yeah. So I think that her her reflex her reflex was to find somebody who was the opposite. You know, Will Smith ain't beef with nobody. Yeah, that, got, that that makes sense. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, you know, you know, she she went to the other opposite extreme because she wanted to be with somebody who she wouldn't that lose. That makes and sense. And and the thing about it is, she knows she's not going to lose Will. That's why she no. says the things she says and does what she that's does. That's why she does she what she lost does. Pop. So she's trying to find the most certain, most sure, most unshakable dude there is. But the thing about it is, if you with somebody who you really don't want to be with, eventually you will destroy them. I mean, you no. could like a lot no, of females. No. Like when I was younger, a lot of females would date dudes who was assholes, and then they would come to me because I was <laughs> Devin. The, He's the a nice cleanup guy. man. Yeah, the cleanup man, exactly. Yeah. Cleanup man. But if a woman is with you because you're the cleanup man, they're not really that into you. No. And so imagine, imagine you being the um, imagine being the cleanup man. Imagine being the guy she's with because the last dude really hurt her. She's not with you because, oh, my God, he's great. She's with you because, mm-hmm. okay, this is safe for now. Mm-hmm. And then eventually she'll eventually lose interest because yeah. she never wanted to be She never wanted to be with you in the first fucking place. Yeah. And, and, and he was just so enamored by her. He probably, because Jada was fine. And Jada's still beautiful. She but beautiful. Yeah, 90s, even, with, with, even with the baldy, I'm like, she's she beautiful. Yo. In the 90s, Jada, there was just like three or four black women. They, they all was on a similar level. Like it was like Lila Rashawn, mm-hmm. Halle Berry, uh, Jada Pinkett, like in the er- early 90s. I think Neil yep, yep. Long was right there too. But I think Jada and Halle and Lila was like a slight step above that. And then after that, you had like Sana Lathan and but mm-hmm. Jada, Jada was always mentioned with Halle. Jada, yeah, this is yeah, pre J-Lo, yeah. pre J-Lo. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But Jay, it was always like Jada, Harley, Lila Rashawn. Yep. So yep. you as a celebrity, Will, you know, you're you're in spaces, you got the money where you got access to these beautiful women. And any any one of us, we all had a crush on Jada. We all thought Jada was fine. Who didn't think Jada was fine? So he, you know, he got her. 
And then yeah. a lot of people looked up to Tupac too. So Tupac passes away. So one of arguably greatest rapper ever. He's you should dead. Keep freezing. <laughs> I know it keeps freezing. Right? Keep freezing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we, I, at <laughs> least, they, can hear, they can hear the audio. Yeah, they can hear the audio. So fuck yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. is what it is. I, I'll, I'll try to figure it out. Maybe I, I, I got to clean some stuff on my computer, whatever. But yeah, but anyway, sometimes, and this is kind of gay a little bit, but sometimes dudes like to smash a chick who's connected to somebody, a, a dude that's powerful. It's kind of odd. That's why the whole I'm going to smash your girl thing, that's like a big thing or whatever. Like, it's it's, it's a way to yeah, exude Yeah, I've heard, I've heard you say that shit. Huh? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. No, I've, I've heard you say shit like that. Yeah. Like somebody's like a celebrity. Like y'all yeah. smashed that chick too, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you on his level. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm, so it's a slight like, like Will Smith. I think he was recently on the Breakfast Club, and he was saying that he's still jealous over her relationship with Tupac. You jealous over yeah. a dead man, and you yeah. shouldn't feel that way. But the reason why you feel that way is because your wife is an out of pocket, and she's saying and doing things to make you feel that way. Exactly. So, because you wouldn't be thinking about Tupac no, if she wasn't bringing him up. Your daughter wouldn't be saying, "I wish Pop was around to make you happy." If you wasn't constantly lamenting, talking to your kids about this shit, a kid shouldn't be talking about. I mean, not a kid, an adult, a parent shouldn't be talking to the young kids about their relationship issues with their nah. husband. Now, yeah, nah. If it's like that's our like, mothers, that's like, that's like me like talking us. to my wife about. Some chick I dated before. Yeah, man, this chick named Marty Battle. Like, can't talk yeah. about sons like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or even if you're gonna talk about relationship with your with your sons, with your with about your their mother. They're too young to comprehend and grasp and understand that shit right now. But yeah, if they get older, 25, 30, and you want to have the conversation as an adult, that's cool. But Jada talking to Will Willow. Well, she like seven or eight, and I'm like, Tupac was my boy. Why isn't he here, Pac? It's like yeah, that's intense. Like Will ain't shit. That's intense. Yeah, that's crazy. That's, that's crazy. She got yeah. no respect for nobody. She'll air out the dirty laundry to long as, young as kids. Like now, uh, Jaden be acting like he like boys, and Willow look like she like girls, and Willow was in a bed. With the actor that was like 28 years old, even though he's mm-hmm. like a midget, he looks kind of like mentally off or whatever. But she's in a bad hug that went with no shirt, he got no shirt on. They got all kinds of weird stuff going inside the house. Mm-hmm. Will, Will's and Will out there making 20, 30 million dollars for, for movies and all over the place and positive TikToks and, and and trying to do all these things, you know, and coming off as this great guy. Why the fuck? Does he allow himself to still be with like such a dysfunctional human being? Yo? Now that's a, that's that's the million dollar question. Let's break that down because yeah. he said numerous times that Jada um, is good at keeping secrets. Yeah, she said he's now. she's he's good. At, so what's the secret that she's keeping that you're so scared of? Right. You wouldn't you wouldn't let <laughs> nobody just disrespect you. Unless they have something on you. And I think it's bigger than homosexuality. Because mm-hmm. nowadays people come out, it's not even a big deal. Yeah, nobody It's such a point. common thing. So it, 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 it uh, damn, I don't mean to go there. It, <sighs> and, 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 you know, choose your words careful because we, we don't want to say nothing negative. Yeah. Part of the public it, could like be, that, so. it could be some type of harm to somebody, whether it's children, um, it could be some type of murder. Well, you, you know, know what I think it is? I think I think a part of it could be um because he's seen abuse in the household. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which leaves a scar on people. Yeah. So I think I think that has affected his behavior. So it's some it's, it could be some it could be something in him that he just mm-hmm. don't want people to know. It could yeah. be the fact that she's seen him break down. It could yeah. be the fact she's she she knows his trauma. And when you have yeah. trauma, you have trauma responses. It could yeah. be that she keeps those things secret because if people find out about it, he's afraid of how they're going to perceive him with, the, with yeah. his trauma. Like, you know, or a certain, I, certain I'm, embarrassing, I'm not going like to speculate on anything. Yeah. But I know for a it could be, a, it could be a number of things. I, it could be a, but I think uh, homosexuality, I don't think that's a big enough issue for, for him to deal with that much turmoil. Because from what I heard, I heard that he wanted to come out, whether it was bisexual or homosexual or whatever, but I think his publicist and one of his handlers ad- ad- advised against that. But that that and then 
of they, they said he had like a long relationship with Dwayne Martin, Tisha Campbell's ex husband. Yeah, and and he was Dwayne Martin was living with him. You know what I'm saying? It was like in, in, a, in a little guest house. So, you know, like if that was the case, he could just go outside, go to the guest house, get his freak on. I'm not saying that's what it is, but it's it's it's, it's definitely something like whether you you did something against kids. You did, and I'm not saying he did, but I'm just saying what could be, uh, what could have such a strong hold on him that he's willing to to put up with all her shit, and she knows this, and with confidence she treats him like shit. She must have something huge on him. Or he, he, you know, it could be some type. Like I said some type of murder, some type of abuse, like you said, some type of a traumatic, embarrassing shit that he don't know the world to know that he's been through growing up. It could be a litany of litany of those things out. You know what I'm saying? He could have got maybe he was molested as a child or some shit. I'm just speculating, and that's just something embarrassing that he never wants to talk about. And it could be somebody like close in his family who he doesn't want to expose. You know what I'm saying? So, and he's a, this is all speculation, but mm-hmm. it, love is not keeping him in that situation. That's not love. That's not love. Isn't toxic. Oh, I did this because I love you. No, love is not going to put you in a position to lose everything off of something so minute and something that's so small. Yeah. But right. see, that's why I, I like to use that, that analogy to begin with my joke about the she bears, because a lot of people are Christians and a lot of people use the Bible as justification for the bullshit that they do. So they can be like, yo, he went too far with the smack. Well, in the Bible, God possessed bears to eat these, eat kids for making fun of a bald head. So what he did was justified. That's not even on the same level. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's something deep. That's not love. Mm-hmm. Love doesn't put you in a position to do irrational things. No. Because you got first of all, you got to love yourself before anything. First of mm-hmm. the first law of nature is self-preservation. If you're not yeah. preserving this first, how could you help anybody else? You True. love your kids, you love your sons, right? Mm-hmm. You love your Absolutely. sons to death. But if you was just like bump it. I love my sons, but I'm still get drunk like crazy. I'm gonna still eat Wendy's at two in the morning. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna still yeah. smoke weed and pop pills, or whatever, because it, it make me feel good. Whatever. Mm-hmm. You not? Yeah, you might love your kids, but you you are destroying yourself. So how right. could you really give the love? Give the love that you have within yourself if you destroy mm-hmm. yourself. So that's, that's not love. So if somebody's pushing you to do rash things to destroy yourself in order to maintain whatever it is that you have between you and that person. To, in my opinion, love doesn't guide you to do that, man. That's not love, man. Yeah. He he feels that he owes her something. That's um, what it is. And the kids are grown, so you can't use a kid. Like, when they little, you know what I'm saying, before 15 years old, I could get that. Got to stay together for the development of children, blah, blah, blah. Them, both of them kids is millionaires. They could never talk to their parents again. They're going to be they're gonna be set for a few mm-hmm. lifetimes. Mm-hmm. So, it ain't that. And she complaining about your sex. She having sex with your son's friends. And that's the one that we do know about. It's true. And when I heard she was bisexual too. So who's to say she ain't mess with some of Willow's friends? <laughs> we like the stuff that's that we lie, yeah, that's, that's a lie. Like imagine if huh? I had I had a daughter, my daughter brought some friends home. I'm like daddy, like she was like nineteen. She brought some friends home. I'm like daddy, yeah. this is my friend Samantha. Like oh Samantha, huh? Like. That shit sounds crazy. crazy. That'd be crazy. Is that? It's you crazy. Don't cross that line. It's too many. Cross. Yo, it's too many women in the world to even fall like that. Yo. Like, you know what I'm saying? Okay, she's thick, sexy. Look, damn, this shit crazy. Let me. I gotta get the fuck out of this house and go bag something. Not, not, not use your children to bring you sex dates. Yeah, that's crazy. That, that's mind boggling. That's insane. Yeah, and, and I, like. I, there's no justification for it, but I can understand different levels of why people fall to bullshit like that. If you're mm-hmm. broke, you don't got no bread, you know what I'm saying? You're not really out on a scene like that. You got two kids, they're like 20 years old. They bring in sexy chicks and stuff all over, and that's the only thing you see. I, I, I can see that person fall into the temptation of fucking around with their kids. Uh, not their kids, but their, their kids' friends. I'm talking about adult friends. I ain't talking about 11, 12-year-olds, so get that bullshit out your mind. I can see that person falling. But if you $400 million, you're traveling all the time, 
You can go to any country in the world at any moment within 24 hours. I think the longest flights are like 20 hours, 24 hours, whatever. But within a day on a private jet, you could be to any place in the world to have your pick of any woman that you want. And if you're worried about them exposing you and telling on you, there's plenty of situations where like brothels, they don't even speak English. Or the only the number they know is green. You can have shades on, you can have a mask. There's so many things you can do to get those rock your rocks off. So there's no excuse if you're in that position and you got that kind of money, power, influence as Jada d- does to just succumb to your, your son's friend. And it's, it's diabolical because she started off as his comforter, as mm-hmm. as as his um she was like giving him advice, like his, his spiritual advice. So she was in a position not only age-wise did she outrank him, but as far as like she's supposed to be his teacher and his healer, mm-hmm. healer. Mm-hmm. You know, in the education well, system, even though they're, they're not she's not a real teacher, but in the educational system, it's considered statutory rape to have sex with your students because you have a you have more influence over them and, and you can manipulate them to do things that they probably wouldn't do if yeah. this di- if that dynamic didn't exist, you know, right, what I'm right, saying? Right. for a separation <clears throat> and, 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 and uh, societal levels between each other. Yeah. And she took advantage of all that. And she's beautiful. Any young man in his 20s going on smuts Jada, he's dealing with all these mental issues. So they start learning. He blowing her back out. But, you know, Will still got to come go, come around. She's not going to divorce Will for him. She's not going to go $400 million, man. Let's see how much Let's see how much August Alcina is worth. I'll look it up right now. August Alcina, August Alcina net worth. August Alcina is worth $4 million. That's great, right? Okay. Will Smith net worth. Uh, Will Smith is worth $350 million. Yeah, you already know. This, he, she not leap. She not. Yeah, the dick is good. Blah blah blah. Yeah. But this is what happened. This, this is what I think happened. Will was complicit. He gonna let Jada do whatever she do. You get your get your freak on. Do whatever. Just don't embarrass me in public. Mm-hmm. I think the the monkey wrench happened when August fell in love. And he wasn't mature enough to handle the situation that this is something that's only fleeting. You're just a boy toy. Yes, you had some mental issues. I helped you out, blah, 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 blah. But ultimately, I ain't leave my husband for your broke ass. Your crazy ass. And, mm-hmm. and when that happened, that's when he started uh, doing interviews and, 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 and making singles about the coochie and all this stuff. Because it was a cry for help. August Alcina, his actions was that, like that too. But I also think I think they. I, no, I think everything you're saying is 100 percent accurate. But I think also too that um, when 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 dudes fall in love, a lot mm-hmm. of times they can be just as sneaky as these and manipulative as, as these yeah. chicks. Yeah, yeah. And I sure. think that a big part of it was he was trying to maintain Jada's attention, and he was trying to benefit off it too. Because yeah. you know, August Alcina is like a he's like a C list R and B singer. You know what I mean, he not, <laughs> See, he not yeah, facts. You know I mean, he not top of the game. So this nah. is a way for him to bring more attention, get Jada's attention. Yeah. You know, if, if Jada was trying to end it, like you know what, with my husband, you get too serious. I gotta end it. That's another way to like quote, quote unquote. Say it again, lastly. No, I was saying I think that uh, possibly uh, those elements are there too. The element of him trying to get back at her if she was trying to end it, and uh-huh. him trying to like utilize the situation as a means to as a, as a come up, a way yeah. to bring attention to his career. Yeah, yeah, man. But uh, yeah, she, I don't know. That's it's just it's just not love. Um, we we were talking for a while. We we we, we psychoanalyzed it. We broke it down. We basically said that w- that slap was frustration, mainly brought on by her, but he's not going to hit her, but he still wants to prove that he's as worthy as Tupac. So he does something. Because you notice when he did it, she laughed at me. Ha, 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 like that, mm-hmm. that, that's what she wants. That's what she wants. Yeah. From. She wants this. Yeah. But she doesn't understand that living in that way is a thing 
that got the man that you your biggest love killed. Killed, yeah. So she for her not yeah. to, to 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 not see that, yo, like that shit is like <clears throat> that shit is wild. That shit is wild to me, man. It is. It's it wild is. And, it, and it, it's unfortunate. So yeah, so so yeah, she was happy he did that bullshit. He felt pressured to do something. Really wanted to do the Jada. But uh, if he did that, if he does that, I think he gets a lot of respect from us. If he slapped the shit out of her, but he would have really been done. What when he was like, yo, bitch, get, he just making jokes. Get your shit together, bitch. <laughs> if that would have happened, yo, this yo, that shit would have been crazy. First of all, he'd be in jail. He'd be in jail. <laughs> He's in jail. Oh my God. It's open season on black men. Black men don't care about black women, black women. Because yep. they're already looking at Chris Rock. It's basically that's what he did. He don't care about black women, and, and he's like, he said, they said Chris Rock is misogynist and always dissing on black women. I don't see that. I know years ago he had a joke about he hates weave and stuff like that, but to me that's not disrespecting black women. That's saying I prefer you in your natural state. Yeah, I prefer you not altering yourself with with all this bullshit. You know, yeah, what when I mean? the weave becomes synonymous with black women, like that's so what I'm I say saying. I don't like like weed, that's not the same as saying I don't like black women. That's yeah. weird as hell. That shit, that shit, that shit, goofy, man. Yeah. But um, but yeah, yeah. Anyway, and so just to recap, and Chris Rock threw out the joke because in his mind, Will gets so much shit, and and a lot of the shit comes from her. That if Will's not gonna give shit back, I'm gonna give some shit back because they my friends. Mm-hmm. But Chris Rock miscalculated. He didn't think it was going to blow back up in his face. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> she was. It's sad, but it was kind of funny though. There you go. Like, but, you, but he he's smart and he's funny as hell. He gonna ride yeah. that wave. He gonna he gonna yeah, play oh, oh yeah yeah yeah. He gonna put that. He gonna put that. This is a. Uh, he gonna ride. He gonna on tour too. You just gave him some material. Oh my god! I, I like. I know. Um. His his career was never dead. But this definitely uh, invigorated. Yeah, invigorated his, his. Absolutely. Yeah. You gave him, yo. Yeah. Will gave him material for like at least the next twenty years. He could bring yeah. this up twenty years from yeah. now. Everybody yep. gonna remember it. He can say yep. something about it. It's gonna be uh, the jokes. The jokes gonna write themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um. So, what? What, what can I? Our uh, young people learn from this. Because you're the psychoanalyst with this, and you you do work with the kids. Yeah. So, what could the young yeah, folks yeah. learn from this, man? The uh, the crazy thing about it is that young men are always going to do what young women want. So, yeah. if women are praising this, then you're going to see an increase in this kind of behavior, mm-hmm. in which it's hard to believe that it can increase. Because as I was saying, a lot of the young men that I work with, they were in facilities, they were in um uh, uh detention for doing mm-hmm. things like this. I think instead of us glorifying this and teaching our young men that this is what it means to protect black women, we gotta if we gonna if we gonna teach protect protecting black women, we gotta teach all levels of it, not just the, yeah. the physical level of it, but let's talk about financial protection. Let's teach our young men to get your money right so when you get married, you can be prepared yeah. for that shit. Let's talk yeah. about being a father. Because if Will Smith, if Will Smith had young kids, or somebody has young kids, say you got a son that's two, you smack right. somebody trying to quote unquote protect your girlfriend from an insult. You get locked. Yeah. You're gonna protect your kids while you in jail, and it's and I and I I've worked with dudes who were in situations where people be watching your house. If there's no man in your house, people gonna prey on your kids. People gonna yeah. disrespect you more if you ain't got no man. Yeah. People, I I know I've I've heard stories about dudes who, you know, they would watch a certain household. And if there's no man coming in and out of that house, uh-huh. they will get with the mother. Just so they could get with the kids. Yeah, I've heard these horror stories. So That's protecting crazy, your man. wife and protecting your family is much bigger than just smacking somebody. Yeah, said something. Like, yeah. you gotta understand that you got a responsibility as a man to physically be there. That's yeah. what it means to protect your woman. Ultimately, you gotta physically be there. If Will gets shot over this, or any young man gets shot over this, or or or, or any man any man loses his freedom over something like this, mm-hmm. you're not protecting nobody. You ain't protecting nobody. You ain't protecting nobody. Yo, 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 and you gotta also remember too, you as a black man, you are important too. Yes, the black woman is important. And I tell this to people I work with all the time. You're important too. And a lot of black men have never heard that. Yeah. 
A lot of black men have never heard, yo, you too important to get locked up. They don't, they never heard that before. So yeah. I say that, man. Y'all too important to get locked up with a small shit. Yeah. And killed with a small shit. But this, to see so many of our sisters, and I'm talking about famous A-list Hollywood females saying that was a commendable thing. That's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. That is just such a dangerous, poisonous message to send to our youth. Because a lot of a lot of our youth, they don't have mothers or fathers. Yeah. They're looking up yeah. to say, like, I know celebrities that like, oh, I'm not a role model, blah, blah, blah. But people watch you, you are. You're getting the millions of dollars. Whether you say you are or you aren't, it, it yeah. is what it is, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm not saying you got to be Mother Teresa or Father Fred or whatever the hell, but you you can't give off like poor advice and information or, 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 or celebrate. Like even if you even if you like that, what Will did, you still got to be objective and know objective enough to know that you see it as protection. But other people might see, you know what I'm saying, and say, okay, well, fuck it, this is how I protect every time. But like you said, there's different levels of protect, there's different ways to protect some, some, somebody. Mm -hmm. That's not the only way. And that, especially in that instance, that is that wasn't the only option. And it was a, the shittiest option. You know? It was a dumb option. But and a now, lot of people gonna run up on yeah. stage and, and, and do this crazy shit, man. Kids don't know. You can defend yourself with words unless somebody's attacking you and coming at you physically. There's ways that you can handle the situation before you become physical. What Will did, uh, myself and Mr. Wellness Initiative, we do not condone in any shape, form, or fashion. Yes, mm -hmm. protect your sisters, your mothers, your, your wives, your grandmothers, and protect your sons and your daughters and your fathers. That's the thing. They always say protect one side as if the other side doesn't need protection. Like, yeah, Jada Pickett can't really physically protect Will, but she can protect his image with how she conducts himself. She can protect his emotions. If she protect if his she, emotions. If she, gives a, if she gives a shit. Yeah, she ain't do none of that shit. She ain't do none of it. So just, just uh, for, for those that are watching or that will be watching, that whole thing, that's not love. That's obsession. That's toxicity. That's violent. It's evil. Mm -hmm. And then to smack, go back, know nothing was going to happen to you, sit back down and just enjoy the rest of the ceremony, collect your Oscar, cry, boo-hoo, and basically said, uh, I just want to protect people. Richard Williams protects people. Because he was trying to allude that, he was trying to justify what he just did. That's why he kept mm -hmm. saying protected. That was whatever. Right. And then, then don't apologize to Chris Rock, who you fuck, hit. And, and, and just go and dance and party and got the statue in your hand like nothing happened. That's psychotic. That's yeah. cognitive dissonance. Yep. And, and, and also, you know, I think he was in a state of shock. Mm -hmm. I think he was kind of hiding the fact he was worried. But also, let me say this, too. If he lose everything over this... Yeah. If he lose everything over this, are the same people who are cheering for him now? Y'all gonna provide anything for him? Y'all gonna do anything? Let's say, for instance, he more than likely no. They already paused his movie deals. Let's say they take those movie deals away. Yep. Let's say he, he lose the Oscar. Let's say they take him, they strip the Oscar. Let's yep. say they, they he loses movie deals. Let's say within a few years he go broke. What the hell y'all gonna do for him? Y'all think this is cool and think what he did was right and what he did was righteous? What are y'all gonna do for him to take care of him if he loses everything? If his reputation goes downhill, Will Smith can never make another movie. What are all these cheerleaders going to do for him? Yo, Be realistic. Half the people that's cheering for him hate him because he's rich. True. It's just something to cheer for at the moment. But if he lost everything, yeah, he might have uh, some support. But for the most part, he shouldn't have did that. He went he, he went too far. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like That's coming. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming because people, people don't stand on nothing they believe anyway. These, these no. individuals, they have convenience. You tell some, you know when somebody stands on what they believe when yeah. they when they being challenged. If you're being challenged, you might lose something. You stand on what you believe. That's how you know what you believe truly. Right. Believe. But these people, they ain't got they not they ain't got nothing on the table to, to bet with. Right. So you can easily, if somebody playing dice at the at the casino, they got a million dollars on the table. You can easily sit there and be like, "Yo, bet it all." You're not losing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. Ain't got nothing on the table. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you can tell them, "Yo, bet it all, man. Go in. You'll punk if you don't bet it all." 
Yep. Yeah, everybody, everybody always know the right thing to do that's that's not experienced in this situation. Yep. And, and keep know? in mind, before we go, yep. all them chicks that's saying Will Smith did the right thing, a lot of them ain't got no man. A lot of them ain't got no man. A lot of them can't keep no man. So don't take advice from individuals that can't. And, and listen, I don't got no girl. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But me neither. But I've had a girlfriend, and I've I've had to check people that got out of pocket and never got violent. I had to, ch I had to check certain individuals more than once, but I still was able to handle it. I'm in the comedy world. People get drunk. You bring a lady around. Sometimes comics gonna say some stuff. So you know, you you, you got to we got to got to keep on um, hold on you got to keep uh just got to keep letting people let, let let individuals know and then sometimes in certain situations like me as a comic i know certain like comics act a certain way you don't always have to bring your lady around every situation okay like i said don't bring your never bring your girlfriend to the barbershop she going to hear shit that she ain't going to hear she might find somebody to think she think cuter than you. You bring her to the lion's den with man conversation. So sometimes you bring in a certain lady in certain situations, it's going to put you in a precarious position. That's like one thing. I never take girls out to the club. Never. I go to a bar, a comedy club, a lounge, but a place where we dance in and interact with other people. Other, other people might be drunk and come at you like, nah. Because I'm not a fighter. That's not who I'm. I don't want to be brought out of my character. I don't fight. I haven't had a fight. I'm not saying I can't fight, but I haven't had a, like, a real fist fight since I was 14. That's right. not by accident. I've had arguments. I've had to check people. I've had to stand up for myself. But, you know, for the most part, you don't got to fight every time. A lot of people that just fight, they they just don't know how to conflict resolute. You know what I mean? And yeah. people ain't just running around setting and just punching people randomly. That shit don't happen. Yeah. It don't happen. Oh, shit, this nigga's soft. Like, you know, like, they create this thing, yo, you got to fight, you got to be with, and then people always constantly talk about how tough and big and bad, I do this, and I do that, I, I hate those conversations, it's like, why mm -hmm. even put that energy into the universe, you talk about how much you'll fight and beat somebody up, why not talk about how much money you about to flip, I got this crypto, I got these NFTs, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, I got these stocks, man, I got these shows coming up, I want you to brag about productive shit. I don't want you to brag about how tough you are. You're going to punch somebody if they do this to your family. Like, why even? Because you keep talking like that. Somebody won't challenge you on that shit. Exactly. exactly. You brought that energy to yourself. That's how Pop got killed. Acting like that. True. Posturing. Yeah, true. You posture enough, people will feel insecure, and they want, they want to see if you really about that life. Exactly. And, and before anybody says, oh, y'all talking like that because y'all don't protect black women. Keep in mind, I was married for a decade. Yeah. To a, to a black woman. And, I, and I'm and i I'm not no tough guy or nothing like that, but I've been in situations I was about to blow somebody's goddamn brains out for, yeah. for my wife. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. I, was about to, I was about to take it. She, she's the one who calmed me down and kept me from taking it to the full out of And that's what a wife's supposed, supposed to do. Yeah. What she, she's supposed to do. Yeah. But at the same time, I do believe, I do believe wholeheartedly in protecting a black woman. Yeah. At the same time. Of course. You got to, I tell, I tell the young men that I work with all the time, you got to be strategic. If you yeah. got to do what you got to do, because in life, sometimes you got to do certain things. You yeah. got to do what you got to do. Do it yeah. so that you can keep your freedom and keep your, your life. Yo, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, I don't know how this is going to work out or resolve itself. But you see, Will is losing endorsements left and right. But yeah. the, the bane of his existence or the source of everything, the majority that seems to what to, to, the, the majority of what seems to ail him is his quote unquote better half and eventually he got to make a stand you know what I'm saying and his second half of his life he he got he, he got to leave he got to leave her or Yo, have some type yeah, of separation he, something mm -hmm. yeah but the thing about it is though this this is interesting too mm -hmm. I know we're about to wrap it up no no we're good go ahead go ahead it's interesting because I, I see, like, in the black community, our reaction is different from the white community. Yeah, of Like, course. us in the black community, we like, you know, if he divorces her, if he leaves her, he might be able to bounce back. The white community is like, oh, my God, he's a monster. But the black community is like, like well, it's because of his own insecurity and because of his yeah. it's, it's real interesting to me. Because we, we white like, black folks, we actually try to fix this situation. White people, mm -hmm. they just want to throw it away. Yeah, they, they 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 see us as you know they see us as a threat anyway. Like, yeah, we'll finally show us true colors. They see yeah. us as will finally. And that's what I'm saying. And, and one of my, my my bits, I was like, damn, Will Smith. 
one of the most nicest, gentle human beings. Like he's on the level of Gandhi. Mm-hmm. And he physically assaults somebody. I said, this shit got me nervous. I said, that tells me any one of you motherfuckers in the audience could smack me if you don't like my jokes. <laughs> Cause he's softer than all of y'all. He did it. You know what I mean? So that, that's one of my jokes. I said, shit, I don't know what to say to y'all, man. Will we'll yeah, Smith yeah. smack my? I said, any one of y'all could just slap me. I don't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> And they always look. They always look at us as King Kong was a racist movie. The original. It's all about us being the brutes, and and like Will Smith. Like I said in the last pod, but they, they missed it because I didn't record. It's like the story in Job, where Satan was like, <laughs> "Let me get a voice for Satan." Nah, I'm not, not going to use that. But I'm going to use a smooth voice. He said, "Look at here, God. You see all the things that man has. That's the reason why." <laughs> That's the reason why they worship you. You take away these things, they ain't gonna care about you no more, God. And like to me, God, God's the one that sounds diabolical. God is the evil one. The Bible. Are you kidding? Look at my son Job. He has everything. He's never did anything wrong. Yeah, God, because you put this hedge around him. You don't let nothing bad happen. His lottery numbers be hitting. <laughs> pregnant as soon as he put it in all his kids is healthy he's a millionaire his farm and his livestock never get sick man you take on look at his skin his skin glistening man take away take away his riches so god take away okay i'll take away the farm yeah man he took away the farm but look at his kids his kids is <laughs> Kill them motherfucking kids and watch <laughs> curse you, you bitch ass nigga. What? All right, I'm gonna kill his motherfucking kids. So God killed the kids again. See, the kids are dead. He still has not cursed me. He said, Yeah, man, but look at his skin. His skin is glistening. And this, this man has the greatest skin ever. He could lose everything in life. He still got his skin. Let me touch his skin and then watch he curse your black ass up. What? I'm not black. And okay, you want to say that? We're going to give that motherfucker, well, excuse me, mofo leprosy. <laughs> yeah, his skin is fucked up. Damn, he still ain't cursing your black ass out. I guess you won the bet. Yes, and I will make your skin better. I'll give you 10 more kids. I'll give you double the livestock. But then all of your kids are going to die again, and you're going to be sad 10 more times. But then you'll be brought back in heaven because I make no fucking sense. (laughs) (laughs) And see, what'd you think of that scene, man? Yeah, she was mad intriguing. (laughs) Huh? That's mad good acting. <laughs> yeah, you seem to totally entertain. Right? You, you was watching the whole thing, man. <laughs> yeah, she was intriguing as hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, but I don't know why I veered off on that tangent. Oh, but no, but but what I was I saying was... I forgot all the point. I, forgot no, I know the point. The point was, Will was supposed to be our greatest example of us and how we can keep it together. And our greatest example failed. In the Bible, the greatest example succeeded. But in our instance, the greatest example of us failed. So if the greatest example... Like, if Joel would have failed, then reality would have been over for humanity. You know what I'm saying? And see, J- uh, uh, Will Smith failed... So it's old for niggas. We about to go back to Jim Crow. You know what I'm saying? We about to go back to slavery days because Will was supposed to hold it down. And the, the God that his wife presented him in front of the world. And Chris Rock, the Satan, tempted him and he slapped the shit Or maybe Jada is Satan. <laughs> oh, maybe, um, maybe Chris Rock is Joe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, if you flip it like that, if you flip it like that, then we still got a chance because I th- it's two things that happen in there. One, white people gonna look at it as like, oh, look at what, what he did. Black people can't get, keep it together in these extreme situations. He lost his cool just because someone said about his wife. 
But on the flip side, damn, they smacked the shit out of Chris Rock. He's a black man, but he didn't react and lose his cool. Wow, black people have a chance. So white people can look at that situation and it's confusing. Because on the one hand, a good black man lost his composure. But on the other hand, a good black man kept his composure. So it kind of cancels out. <laughs> so we we right back to where we started as far as what these crackers think about us, man. <laughs> they gonna change anyway. It didn't change nothing. It just canceled out <laughs> their perception of us, man. <laughs> so if you think black people got a chance, you like what Chris Rock did. If you think that black people don't have a chance, you focus on only on what Will did. So I guess it's all a it's crazy. It's so many layers to this shit, you know. So many different ways to look at it. It's so many like different opinions that are formulating from what happened. You know? Yeah, no. And 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 now that you now that you, like like what you just said is interesting because it really mm. just comes down to your own perception anyway. If you're a motherfucker that, that think black people ain't got no chance, no, no matter what you see, you're gonna think we ain't got no chance. If you think we do got a chance, no matter what you see, right? just like a lot of white people don't like us, no matter what the hell they see. Yeah, no matter what you do. Will Smith exceed yeah. for years and that don't mean nothing you thought it all the way because of one mistake yeah it's just like Will's a multi-million hundred million dollar good looking tall in shape abs healthy children academy awards grammys platinum seller artists his wife still ain't satisfied <laughs> it's impossible some women not all but some women it's impossible to 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 please them. And I, I got a joke talking about these types of women. I was like, you give her a rock, she want the mountain. You give her the mountain, she want the earth. You give her the earth, she wants the solar system. You give her the solar system, she want the galaxy. You give her the galaxy, she want the universe. You give her the universe, she want the other motherfucking dimensions. <laughs> you need to give her away. That's what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? Give her the door. But give her sex one last time before you give her <laughs> away. <laughs> yeah, you I know? mean, I think, yeah, I think ultimately, like, like we were talking about earlier, she wanted so she wanted somebody else. Yeah. He's not the dude. He's not the dude. She, no, matter, no matter what the fuck he do, she's not going to be having anything. And, and even at the time when she caught him, yes, yeah, she had a career. She had poetic justice. I think at the, in 97, she did a movie with Tommy Davis. Woo. And mm -hmm. I think from what I heard, Will Smith checked Tommy because there was a scene he kissed her. He went off script and he kissed her. He did something. And, and Will Smith had to check Tommy on the bus. He was like, listen, man, we can get on this bus right now and uh, wrinkle our clothes real quick. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. they, they, they didn't fight. But mm -hmm. yeah, back in 97, like, yeah, something, something happened where he oh, had to yeah. check Tommy Davidson. But anyway, <clears throat> Even at that particular time, Will Smith was still the biggest star. I think he just did, probably did Independence Day and Men in Black. Remember, like, Will Smith was, like, the J July 4th actor? Yep. Like, yep. every Independence Day or whatever. Every, every, every summer, it was a big blockbuster with him in it. Yep. It was, like, Men in Black a couple times, then uh, Wild Wild West and Enemy of the State. Yeah. So, he mm -hmm. was, the, at the time, he still was the biggest star. So... He still was a big catch for her. So from a monetary standpoint, she's going to do what she do. And he's not bad looking, but he's still the antithesis of pop. Tall, mm -hmm. hair, light skin, even temperament. Totally. A, a, and that's the thing, too. Oh, This is another thing, youth, you got to pay attention to. Whichever woman you choose, whoever you pick, I'm not saying you have to. But if you can get the information know the previous person that she dated or break break broke up with kind of know her you got a specific no but just look at him look at him if you can and try to know some stuff about him you know what i mean because if it's totally different than who you are is a possibility you might have some issues you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. if he's so like my ex she moved on or whatever and that's cool but she dated somebody like looks a taller version of myself same temperament. We like the same. We both do comedy. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we both, oh, like, yeah, we both were like, yeah, yeah, like Kevin Sam. They met at one of my open mics because she still would come by, but we was just friends. But they just yeah, they yeah. hit it off, whatever, you know. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you know what I mean? They gonna do it. It's, it's awkward, but I'm not. I'm, I don't have no problems with him. I have no problems with her. 
whatever. Mm-hmm. It's optically it looks fucked up. Some comedians that make jokes behind the scenes thinking that my he took my girl, even though we was broken up for three months before they hooked up or whatever, got together. Mm-hmm. But if you look at him, it's like a taller version, beard, skinnier version of myself. You know what I'm saying? So I, yeah. I get it. But if you the new guy that you are and you're totally the antithesis of the ex. It, it just raises the, you might be the cleanup man. Might be the cleanup man. You might be the cleanup man. Yep. <laughs> and a lot of a lot of those chicks, you know, once they get over 30, that biological clock ticks. So all the guys that they used to deal with when they was younger, they start to realize how fleeting it is or how it doesn't last because oh, I don't know, those type of guys, them crazy thug niggas either get locked up or killed a la Pac. Mm-hmm. So that's what you were saying. Okay, I'm going to just fuck with the total opposite. So I might not be really into him, but he'll still take care of me and he'll still be alive. Yeah. yeah. But you still hate him. You, and you still hate the fact that you have to settle for the situation, yo. You know what I'm saying? So, Yo, how you messed up your, you messed up your mustache, man? Yo, this happened. I don't know how this happened. <laughs> that shit ain't, ain't it's you're like a months. You're like a, a I grew a whole beard and everything in that time. I grew this beard. You got alopecia? Like, like the last three months. You got you got goatee alopecia? Did you sh- why, you, you try shaving it all off and let it come back? I was about to, but I'm afraid of how I'm gonna look with no mustache. I'm crazy. You still got the crazy. beard though. No, nah, it'll come back uh, like a day. Well, well, you know what you do? Get trimmers and just make it real, real tight. Put the like one. I, put I, the I'm, one guard. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm gonna fuck it up more. Nah, I'm that should look, look crazy. That should look like a. a you like a re- reverse. Oh, yeah. You like a reverse Adolf Hitler. <laughs> you got the Hitler stash, but like the, in the opposite. You know what I'm saying, though? Yeah. Like, he had yeah. shit in the middle of my shit on the middle gone. So how do you... Uh, we, about to, we about to really wrap up. I gave my analysis. We talked about the advice. Um, How does this... How does this situation resolve itself overall with Will? What do you think he needs to do? Uh, I said lead the he, bitch. He, I already he, said. Yeah, yeah he, he's going to definitely need um, therapy. He's going to need therapy because something pushed him over the edge. He got to deal with that. He's going to keep making mistakes. If he ever want to get his shit back, he's going to have to figure out what the issue is. Or yeah. He's going to keep making the same mistakes. This is this is a tip of the iceberg. Yeah. He's a man with a lot to lose. He has to interact with people. His whole career is based upon interacting with people. If you're an actor, yeah. you're going to have agents. You're going to have lawyers. You're going to have mm-hmm. you're gonna act with other actors. you got to go on set. you got extras around you. Something else could trigger him if you don't deal with what whatever it is is the issue. And yeah. for a lot of people, they feel like the issue is Jada. But the issue is deeper than that because he wouldn't be with Jada if um he, he wouldn't have chose Jada if, it, if the issue yeah. wasn't already there. If Jada is the problem, he wouldn't have chose that problem if he didn't have the issue already within it. And that's that's, that's one a, thing. I think a lot of people have focused on, yeah, you know, Jada's a negative influence, but he a grown-ass man. Though. He still got to take responsibility yeah. for himself. You gotta, he can't change her. He can only change himself. As a man with your wife, you have to execute your dominance. I'm not even saying it in a, in a negative way, but you were the man. And this is how I want things. And this is the thing. If she can't get with the program, she will leave. So that tells me that Will never exerted himself in that situation for her to make that decision. Because had he done that, two things could have happened. Either A, she would have left, or B, she would have shaped up. She's still there, and she's still out of pocket. So to me, that that conversation never came up. I agree, one hundred percent. She's yeah. way out of pocket. She 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 out of pocket like crazy. She on the floor at this point. <laughs> Man, she out of pocket. Yeah, all she's over. So the floor. far out of pocket. She on she on the desk like my phone yeah. right now. My desk, yeah. my phone on the desk. A, a full so a full display, pocket. man. Hell yeah. So hopefully, for, you know, we about to wrap it up. The momentary podcast slash wellness initiative. Um, young our young youth. That is not the way to go. Protect women. Not even just black. I hate when they say black black women. Protect women, period. Mm-hmm. But people need to protect each other in general. But 99% of the situation can be, can be resolved with words. You only fight and swing if it is imminent danger and it is to stop 
the danger, not to kill the person that's, that's coming at you. It's to neutralize the situation. But there's no excuse to ever just run up on somebody just for words. The same words they say, you can say those same words back. It can be hurtful. It can make you want to cry. We'll say some hurtful shit and make them cry too. The goal is you don't be the one that strikes first. Go them. If you got to go them and then and, and talk trash back and they swing first, you are not at fault in that situation. But you don't want to try to escalate and elevate the situation to that point. If you could leave, if you're able to leave, just leave the situation. It might be embarrassing. They talking shit. Leave or whatever. Um, if you don't want to get out of character when you, you know, with your wife, uh, afraid that people are going to say stuff to make you uncomfortable, make you act out of character. Don't bring your wife to certain situations. Don't bring your wife to the club. Don't bring your wife where it's like a, a thirsty, drunk people that just don't care. You know what I'm saying? Bring it to more upscale, even though there's nothing more upscale than the Oscars. But <laughs> but the front row of the Oscars is a hostile situation comedically. So if you don't want your wife to potentially get made fun of, then that, 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 that parallels with bringing her to a club. In the club, it's a lot of drunk motherfuckers that might say something out of pocket to your wife. At the Oscars, in the front row, it's a lot of funny-ass comedians that might say something out of pocket that'll make you act out of character, you know what I'm saying? Because they said it towards your wife. So sometimes you can't bring your significant others in certain situations that will potentially trigger you to act out of pocket, act in certain situations. Yeah. And that, that's, that's, that's my advice, man. Yeah, that's that's a part of protection, too. Being yeah. smart and cho choosing the situation. You're right. Yeah. Like you're saying, that's part of protecting, too. Hell yeah. It's been many, many times. Uh, chicks, uh, you want to go to the... Uh, my, one of my chicks, she asked me last week, uh, let's go to this house, this party. I was like, where? It was like an hour away, like near New London. And, you know, all around a whole bunch of people she grew up with. And I know how she gets when she gets drunk. And I just thought of it. I just envisioned the whole thing. Her getting out of pocket. We probably arguing. She lived, she got family living in the area. So I probably would have been driving home mad and stuff. So sometimes, man, it's about the environment that you put yourself in. And, and this particular girl, I'm very attracted to her. Very dysfunctional. She's very dysfunctional. But she got potential. She just needs to be in a different atmosphere and environment. I said, if I was ever in a position to marry you, I move your black ass. From, we get the fuck out of here. You can marry hoes. You can. You just gotta. You gotta supplant yourself and move somewhere else. <clears throat> Not to say that she ain't gonna become a hoe again in a new place, but to me that gives you a better chance of wifing up a hoe if you if you transplant the hoe to another place. <laughs> Give her a hoe transplant. <laughs> you, know, you feel what I'm saying though? <laughs> I got nothing else left to say. Your ass crazy as hell. She's going to be like, I wonder what hoe he talking about. Not knowing she the hoe. Oh, no. We talking about it. I said, I said, I like hoes. She said, I'm a hoe. So, yeah. <laughs> she probably would still be offended if she says it, but she's not going to watch this. She, she doesn't have the attention span to watch her almost two hour pod. She's not going to watch So, I, I ain't worried about that shit. But... I told her, if we ever get married, I'm moving your black ass. We got to move fuck Cali across the country. You got to delete all your social media and everything. I, I will be. But see, you shouldn't have to be that way with somebody. You know what I'm saying? Shit. You doing the same You doing the same thing Will do. Will do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would, it's hypotheticals. But if like, if yeah, I ever did. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> you, you try to convert somebody. You got a whole plan. Yeah, yeah. Plan. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's sure more, Will thought the same thing. It's well, cheap, it's kind of real. going to be different. I'm a simp too. I'm a simp. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I am. <laughs> After all this logical since 1979. shit. 1979. That's going to be your motto. What? Simp since 1979? Simping since 1979. Yeah. After all this logical bullshit, I just, I just, I just threw, I threw all, I threw all the paperwork away and shit. It's like, fuck it. I'm going to just wipe this bitch. We're going to move to the other side of the country. I'm going to delete her social media. I'm going to keep it locked in the basement. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and next thing you know, end up smacking somebody at a party. Smacking somebody over some bullshit. Yep. Now, if, if your wife moves and motivates you to the point where you want to physically hurt people over minute, mundane things, 
that ain't the one. And with that being said, man, I'm hopefully I'm gonna pull this up, uh, get this downloaded, and put this up tomorrow because we're gonna start uh, dropping. This is gonna be Monday. Every Monday we're gonna we're gonna release one of these. You know what I'm saying? Every Monday at 4 p.m. That's 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 gonna be the Wellness Initiative slash Light Skin Perspective, and we're gonna be talking about the news, pop culture. Excuse me. Um, this wellness therapy, you know, movies, whatever. You know what I'm saying? We usually this is something hopefully, that we consist. Hopefully, we do some more music. Music, yeah, 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 music battle. The music battle was just cool. We just got to figure out how to navigate it in a way where we don't get a strike. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. but we'll, we'll, yeah, I've, we'll, I've, we'll seen, I've seen those videos. Like we were saying, it got to be just short. We got to have it queued up. Queued up. That's fun, but we have it yeah. queued up already. Just play like 30 seconds and then keep it moving. We'll be yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that production wise behind the scenes. That's gonna take a little longer, but I'll just have all my YouTube. Um, I'll create a play, either create a playlist or just have a whole bunch of like windows open. Or, or because if you have too many windows open, it slows your computer down. So what I would do is I have a list and maybe have like two open, and then as you're playing yours, I could be queuing up new songs. So and then when I'm playing my songs, you could queue up yours because I think. If you have too many open, you see how raggedy this shit is already as far as the internet connection. But if you got yeah, like right, right. 20 windows open, it's gonna be it's gonna be that much worse. Yeah. Yeah, but you got anything coming up? Any engagements or anything you want to plug as far as your book? Uh yeah, as a matter of fact, yeah, my book is called Easy. Uh huh. Nice. Of mindfulness and meditation for kids eight to twelve, eight to twelve. Um, it teaches young kids how to like learn how to regulate their emotions, how to feel, put themselves in a state of calm, how to feel happier, how to love themselves and appreciate themselves more. And teaches the science of, um, of the science and the biology of meditation and mindfulness. And it does it in a, in a fun conversation, the way that kids can enjoy. Mm -hmm. Also, um, you can get a copy of that book at www.devinmccrory.com. D-E-V-I-N-M-C-C-R. -E okay. I'm going to, um, at the end of the video, Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put a graphic so they see it, so they see that as well, and I I'm gonna do, put a do. I'm gonna put a graphic of that in the uh, description of the video. Okay, gotcha. Yep, and mm -hmm. also um, go to my um, Instagram page, um, you uh, Corey Devin and on Instagram, and um, I'm doing a class this uh, May May first for um, mental okay. health mental health <clears throat> month. I'm doing a class where I'm teaching meditation and mindfulness. It's gonna be free, but it's gonna be real cool because we're doing meditation and mindfulness with hip hop. We're gonna teach oh, you okay. how to write hip hop songs, how to use visualization when you write, how to use visualization to tell stories and describe things, and mm -hmm. also how to use visualization with my meditation and mindfulness. And we nice. want to get people to understand that creativity and art is naturally tied into meditation. Creativity is a meditation process in and of itself. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be real fun. I'm doing that with um Hydro. Hydro 860, my man. Hydro is... Um, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Yep, he's, All right. Yeah, he's a, real, he's a real talented artist, phenomenal dude, real energetic, real Good enthusiastic. People. And um, he's 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 still performing to this day. I'm in my forties, yeah. he his forties. He's still performing. Yeah, I've been yeah. performing like twenty years. <laughs> he's still yeah, doing his yeah, thing, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I definitely wanted him on board because he's still so skinny. Maybe. That's why. <laughs> if he gets fat, he's gonna stop big. performing, huh? And we all big and shit. Yeah, we all fat. We ain't no heart thighs. We 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 got to do is like non visual art. <laughs> we got to do it more with our words and shit. <laughs> Not you know, I'm a comic. I lost weight, but yeah, you get it. <laughs> But that's what's up. As far as me, um, I have a comedy show coming up August the 16th at the Album Room in West Hartford. It's a 413-860-comedy.eventbrite.com because I got a couple of comics from Mass that are invading my show. So the, the theme is 413-invades-860. Daryl Roseman, he's, he's going to be headlining and he's been doing comedy for over 20 years. But I'll put the graphic of that in the video. Uh, once we get this all uploaded. So that's pretty much it. Uh, we're going to be back again next week at 4 p.m. Uh, East Coast time. Um, I'll holler at y'all, man. Hashtag everybody need more green. Peace. Peace. All right. all right, man. Good shit, man. Good shit. No doubt. Peace, brother. Yep, yep.